Hi everyone, it's Dr. David. Today we will learn all about ACE inhibitors and guess what? In less than four minutes. You don't want to miss it. Let's review ACE inhibitors. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme and they all end in pril like lisinopril. It prevents the production of angiotensin II which is a major potent vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstriction causes narrowing of the vessels which increases the blood pressure. So when you give a patient an ACE inhibitor, it is going to cause vasodilation, therefore decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance without increasing the cardiac output, the heart rate, or the heart's contractility. It will decrease the blood pressure because now the vessel has dilated and is no longer narrow. The peripheral vascular resistance has dropped, therefore the blood pressure will drop. ACE inhibitors are indicated for patients with acute or chronic high blood pressure, as well as diabetic nephropathy due to kidney disease, and it is used in combination with other medications like digoxin and diuretics in treating left ventricular dysfunction and heart failure. So what are the most common side effects that you as a nurse have to monitor in your patients when they are taking an ACE inhibitor? They may get very dizzy, they may have orthostatic hypotension due to the lowering of the blood pressure, and because of that, they may get a headache due to the increased blood flow, and they may get a very annoying dry cough. Now some adverse effects that you have to monitor in your patient is angioedema. If the person develops any type of swelling, usually in the facial area or in the neck, do not give it again. This is considered an allergic reaction. Also, captopril causes fatal pancytopenia. These inhibitors also interact with allopurinol as it increases the hypersensitivity to the medication and NSAIDs decrease the ability of ACE inhibitors to decrease blood pressure. ACE inhibitors do have other side effects, which you as a nurse have to monitor in your patient. But an easy way to remember it is by using the mnemonic captopril. And as you see, that is an ACE inhibitor too, right? So the C is for cough, and we talked about that. There's a persistent cough, and it can last up to a month before it subsides. A is for allergic reaction. So you are always going to ask your patient when administering any medications, do you have any allergies? One of the al allergic reactions that can happen with ACE inhibitors is angioedema and that means you will never give them that medication again. P is for potassium increase and proteinuria. ACE inhibitors may increase blood levels of potassium. So it is very important that you include this in your patient education because there are patients that use potassium supplements or salt substitutes which often contain potassium. Proteinuria, it means that ACE inhibitors may cause the patient to have protein in their urine. T is for taste change. Some patients complain of a metallic taste in the back of their mouth. O, edema is for angioedema. So you have to look at any signs and symptoms of edema around the neck and around the facial area or any place when you are giving the patient a ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitors can also cause photosensitivity in your patients and there is the P in captopril. So you wanna make sure you educate your patient on proper use of sunblock and to protect themselves from the sun. It may cause renal failure, indigestion, and as we've learned, low blood pressure because ACE inhibitors decrease the constriction of the vessels, making them wider, which means vasodilation, and now the blood pressure decreases because the peripheral vascular resistance decreases. This mnemonic does not only allow you to understand more of the side effects of ACE inhibitors, but it, it's also a great tool for you to use when providing patient education. So here are some nursing considerations when giving a patient an ACE inhibitor. You want to always assess their allergies. Obtain baseline vitals so that you know if the medication was effective. Obtain baseline renal function labs and potassium level because remember, ACE inhibitors may cause renal failure and also retain potassium. So if your patient's potassium is high, you shouldn't give it. Remember to educate your patient on avoiding potassium substitutes, that they need to monitor their blood pressure, they need to monitor their lab work at home, and it's very important that they follow medication compliance. And one other thing, ACE inhibitors are to be given one hour before or two hours after a meal. So now what's left? Now you're going to evaluate your patient to determine if the medication was effective. Did the blood pressure go down? Did the patient have any adverse effects? And remember, use the mnemonic captopril to remember all of those side effects that ACE inhibitors may cause. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to press the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. Place your comments and questions in the comment section and don't forget to visit me in my other social media forums. Thank you for watching.